What a mess. What a goddamn mess. The 2018 Pittsburgh Steelers season can only be described as an unmitigated disaster. Um, you know, and this is a team that had a 5,000 yard passer. The person that won the, the quarterback that won the passing title, Ben Roethlisberger. Two receivers, 100 reception receivers, over 1,200 yards both. Antonio Brown led the, I believe he was either tied or led the league with 15 touchdowns as a receiver on what they're saying is an off season. Off season um, for him, where he had 100 plus snags, 1,300 yards, and 15 touchdowns off season. Sure, sure, sure. And Juju, who had 100 receptions, 1,300 yards, no second year slump. Like, not a second year slump. He went above and beyond in his second year, was named the team, team MVP. A 13 sack linebacker in TJ Watt, who, you know, is coming into his own in the second year. And yet, with all these things, completely failed. Not just failed to make the playoffs, um, just a, a failure. You, you lost to the Raiders. You lost to the crummy Raiders. A team you had no business losing to. And I acknowledge that you always play bad against the Raiders. That whole team plays bad against the Raiders for some inexplicable reason. They're not a good football team. And you should beat them. You turn around next week and you beat the Patriots. You almost actually beat the Saints if it wasn't for a few bad calls. Um, you know, and just some poor execution at the, you know, during the game. Why you lost to the Raiders is beyond me. Why you gave up winnable games. Winnable games against the Chargers, against the Broncos, against the Raiders. That's why you're not in the playoffs. Now, it comes out today that, you know, Antonio Brown didn't play Week 17 with a knee injury. Now it's starting to ooze out that he got into a fight with Ben about some type of route thing. And that he's displeased with people in the organization and, you know, they feel like they're down on him or something like that. Oh, come on. Look, the bell thing's bad enough. And, and leave that bell talk at the door. Like, oh, bell would have made all the difference in the world. We'd be in the playoffs if it was bell. No, we wouldn't. Uh, the, the issue that I have with bell um, not being here is that $14.5 million was allotted to him that could have been used on a solid inside linebacker and maybe a couple defensive players that would have put us over the top. Because that money was not used, that's probably, you know, one of the many reasons why this team's not in the playoffs. But it has nothing to do with Bell. As shown, Connor, and Connor got hurt at the end, and Samuels for that matter, people are coming out of the woodwork and rushing for top-end games, 140, 150 yards, you know, before Connor got injured, he was same stat line as Bell. In fact, exceeded Bell's stat line from the previous year at a fraction of the price. So leave that Bell talk. I you know I know that your your players sticking up for other players, but leave the Bell talk at the door. That's absurd. But Antonio Brown, on the other hand, you know, the guy's still at the top of his game. Yeah, he had what you would call a down year, but a down year is other players' career year. Like, the best year of their career is his down year. Now he's fighting with Ben, he's fighting with coaches, you know, he basically ruled himself out of the game. And this is all rumors, I don't know the true story of it, but this is what's coming out now, and he left the game at halftime. Not great for your star receiver. They're not trading him. They're not going to trade him. That is absurd and silly. Why would they trade him? Why would they trade him? First of all, his cap hit is ginormous. It's $22, $23 million, something like that. They would only save, I think, $2 million and have a $22 million cap hit or $21 million cap, cap penalty. That's silly. And that's for a trade. The only way you trade someone like that is if you're getting tremendous talent back. Like, top-end, top-end talent. And the top-end, top-end talent that you'd be getting back also costs money. So you can't just... It can't be done. It can't be done. 
However, this team needs a leader so bad. Real bad. Now, the rumor is that Joe Hayden has been stepping up, um, you know, as that kind of that vocal leader. Um, ben is not really that guy, unfortunately. Um, I know other teams have quarterbacks that are that guy. Ben's not really that guy. Um, you know, Ben's great. He's good at what he does, but he's not that guy. And clearly Antonio Brown's not that guy. But he, somebody needs to get this team. In, now, you'd think that would fall on coaching. You would think it would fall in coaching. But Tomlin is a player's coach. And Tomlin made excuse after excuse after excuse. Oh, Ben, you know, oh, A.B., he's getting his you know, knee looked at and checked out. And all a bill of goods, all, you know, lies. Because what's going on is more drama. And it's been drama for the last few years. Now, I'm not one that generally says fire Tomlin, fire Tomlin like everybody else has. But if this man can't keep control of his team... And his coordinators that he's put in place are not getting it done. Now, I can't fault Randy Fickner, the offensive coordinator, in his first year. You know, he's had, Ben had arguably one of the best years he's ever had. Now, a lot of picks, but, you know, Ben's a gunslinger. He always does throw a ton of picks. But two receivers over 100 catch season, you know, you had offensive line, one of the top in football. And, you know, credit to Mike Munchak for that, who we're probably going to lose, unfortunately, because four different teams have asked, you know, to interview him. Um, but, you know, Feekner had Connor, Samuels cooking. Now, at times, he made some glaringly terrible decisions, and whether that was his play call or Ben Audible, we'll never know. But Feekner did a good job, I felt, as offensive coordinator for all the faults that they had. And at times, when this team looked lethargic and you know just terrible for the great players they were and I think part of that especially in this Cincinnati game most recently was because of the Brown drama that was unfolding this team has too much drama do not resign Bell you don't need Bell you can put that money towards players that will take you over the top now should they draft another you know running back should they free agent, you know, get a free agent running back? Absolutely. I think they should do something like that. But you don't need Bell back. You need Brown. So somebody's got to talk with this guy. I don't know if, you know, maybe the, the fame's getting too much for him. I don't know if it's a Madden curse. Hey, I don't know. There's something wrong with him, and it needs figured out. Um, apparently, you know, according to many reports, that this was all on him. Like, he flipped out over nothing. You know, there's a lot of drama surrounding him this season. A couple times he went rogue and no-showed, and, you know, that's a problem. But you can't, you can't get rid of him. The cap hit is not worth it. And, you know, what would you get in return for that type of cap hit? Um, so definitely not – you just can't get rid of Antonio Brown. Defensively, I mean, did, we do, did they do nothing with the inside linebacker position, assuming that they're going to get Shazier back? That's a big assumption. I love Shazier. I hope he comes back, but they need a sideline to sideline inside linebacker. I have no problem waiting for Shazier, you know, to come back at some point. But for the time being, somebody needs to fill that void. And whether they can do it in the draft or through trade or through free agency, that player is out there and the Steelers need to get him. I would rather see them pick up, take a trade or a free agency on a veteran corner um, because they can't draft corners for anything. They have to have a veteran corner. Hayden, as they shown, bringing in a veteran corner is great. You bring in another veteran corner opposite Hayden, now you have something to work with. You get a sideline side <clears throat> side to sideline inside linebacker, and now you really got something. So, the draft's going to be interesting. The 20th pick in the draft this year. They need an edge rusher. I don't think Bud's the guy. Uh, they need a solid corner. Whether that's in the draft, I prefer free agency. They need a sideline, two sideline, inside linebacker. And they need an outside linebacker for depth. If they get all of these things. And, you know, I think Keith Butler needs to go as defensive coordinator. He needs to go. 
he is not good. Um, unfortunately, he they need a new type of scheme fit. I don't know if it's under Tomlin. I don't know if Tomlin's taking the reins. Either way, somebody needs to figure out something with this defense and make it right. Um, but personnel, personnel, personnel on defense and offensively, I, they just need discipline. They need a vocal leader in that group to shut this shit down. When it, when these people get, you know, when these diva demands get too crazy, they need to shut it down. So I don't know who that is. I would hope that it's someone on this team already that can sort this out. Um, I would hope not to lose Mike Munchak, but that's probably going to happen. Uh, I want to see how aggressive this team will be in free agency. I'm hoping that they will be this year. I think they might finally see now i could be wrong about this this seems foolish but i think they might finally see the error of their ways that they can't overlook opponents and just sleep through them as they did with the raiders as they did with other teams this year where they seem to only gear up for like six games a year against good teams and the rest of the teams they feel like they can sleep and just walk over and that's not always the case um i would like to see more out of you know, defensive pressure. Um, while it was great, Bud, I mean, imagine if they had someone on Watts level on the other side. Imagine if they had two Watts, one on each side. Incredible. Hayward, Pro Bowl selection to it, but both of them are making top dollar. They need more sacks among them. They need more pressures among them. Hargrave, who they always say is the best player out there, not that great. The Steelers do not fire head coaches. So all the people wishing for Tomlin to be fired, it's not going to happen. Um, but some coordinators could and should get fired. Definitely the defensive coordinator, Keith Butler. I would like for someone, and there are a ton of experienced, you know, even defensive coordinators who were head coaches in this past year. I wouldn't even mind seeing Marvin Lewis, of all people, come back to coach the defense. I wouldn't mind seeing... Steve Wilkes, the um, Arizona head coach, come back as a DC. We need a DC that can implement their own style. Not the Tomlin, Tampa 2 garbage, their own defense. I think they have players that they drafted as good quality players, but not necessarily people that fit their scheme. They need to get a scheme similar to what LeBeau had. And I'm not saying the zone bliss, but what I'm saying is it's a lockdown scheme when they're not flipping things around and they seem all confused all the time. They need a lockdown scheme where everybody knows where they're supposed to be and knows what they're doing. They need that quarterback in the middle, an inside linebacker. I can't say enough about the inside linebacker. I think if they had a solid inside linebacker, a C.J. Mosley type, a Luke Keekley type, that guy type in the middle that defense is significantly better. So, Steelers won't be Steelers aren't in the playoffs this year. They made their own bed. And you can say, you know, a lot of the calls did not go their way this year. Bad, bad officiating. But you can say that about a lot of teams. That, you know, a lot of teams had bad officiating. And this team is ripe with talent should be a perennial playoff team, and they have been, to their credit, and Tomlin's never had a losing season. But they've underachieved. I mean, let's not kid ourselves. With the personnel and the, the people that they put together and the team that they put together, you can say about defensive woes and things like that, the Shazier injury, of course, but they have underachieved. They have underachieved under Tomlin. So he needs to figure something out. You either, you know, you can't be their buddy and their friend all the time. You occasionally have to discipline them. You're the dad. Like, occasionally, you know, it's all fun and games, but occasionally you have to discipline them at some point. But let me know your thoughts on the Steelers season. They blew it. I mean, they <laughs> let's not kid ourselves. They blew it this year. Um, you know, they should have been a team that, you know, this was an open season for chance at winning the Super Bowl. I mean, all they need to do is string together a few good games. The Patriots, you know, have kind of fallen to earth. Brady, you know, we don't know if he's going through a knee injury or not. Gronk looks old. Uh, you know, the Chiefs, top flight offense, but, you know, the Kareem Hunt thing, 
Their defense is not all that great. Even NFC-wise, you know, the Rams look like world beaters. Now they're starting to trail off. The Saints, you know, top of their game. Yet they almost lost to the Steelers, who lost to the Raiders. This is the reason why bookies are in business, because of the season. Patriots lost to Steelers. Steelers lost to the Raiders. You know, the Saints lost to the Cowboys. The Cowboys almost got beat by the, You know, I mean, you could go down the list and list and list and list and list. You know, Bears got beat by the Giants, come back, and they blank uh, the Rams. Or not blank the Rams, but they, I mean, they beat them soundly. And it's just like, it doesn't make any sense. This is the reason why, why bookies have a business. Um, but the 28th, 2018 Steelers season, what could have been. But unfortunately, egos terrible coaching if Tomlin if they do retain Tomlin and I assume they will they have to they have to and I'll repeat again they have to hire someone who radios into his little headset and says challenge this play don't challenge this play because he has been the worst coach as far as challenging things they certain teams have this in place they have a team that review, you know, sees the replay right away. As soon as it happens, it goes, oh, challenge that. Oh, don't challenge that. Why is he just challenging these terrible things on a whim? Because he's trying to appease his players. Because the player goes, you know, somebody catches on the sideline. And they go, challenge that. It's good. And you see instantly that it's not. But, it, like I said, it's, a, it's one thing to be nice. It's another thing to be smart. His clock management is not great. It's never been great. Uh, his challenge and his challenging has been terrible, terrible. Some play calls at times, and you can you know say that to the coordinators, but ultimately it goes through him is bad. And disciplining players and not getting them prepared for games, which is you know a coach's basically default job, you know it's been underwhelming. He has not been able to get it done. So if they bring Tomlin back. And I think they will. There does need to be changes. Significant changes. Personnel changes. Coaching staff changes. Maybe even scheme changes. Either way, there needs to be big changes for, you know, next season. We don't know if Ben's even going to come back for all this drama. You know, the AB, Ben stuff, them fighting. They've been kind of fighting back and forth all year. Now, it has resulted in, you know... AB and Ben, for that matter, having solid, great seasons, but somebody needs to figure this out. I don't know, get them in a room, do some couples counseling. I don't know what they have to do, but this will be the first time since 2013 the Steelers are in the playoffs, and hopefully it's a wake-up call for them. Hopefully, maybe it's lights a fire under them for next year. And if it doesn't, and they're an underwhelming team, and then, you know, Ben retires on them, they're going to be a team on hard knocks in two seasons. So they better figure this out now and get the players in place so Ben can have, you know, right off in the sunset with another ring. And I think this team's capable of that. They need some changes. We'll see how this ages. But thank you for watching. Let me know your thoughts on the 2018 Steelers season. Um, I thought it was underwhelming. Um, I'm sure you did as well. Uh, that's why you're watching it. It was just an awful, awful, you know, what could have been, but didn't happen, terrible season. Beyond all the great things that some of, some of the top players on our team accomplished, high marks stats-wise. But stats are not wins, and they didn't win enough to make the playoffs. So that'll put a bow on the Steelers season. Uh, thank you, uh, you know, if you watch this far, thank you for watching. Um, if you watch any of my videos this year, left a like, subscribed. If you watched, you know, any portion, any one second of any video this year, thank you so much. And um, I'm going to do some more in the next year. And hopefully you're along for the trip. Um, but thank you for watching. Like, subscribe. I'll see you in the next one.